Realtree's Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Cabela's, Easton Arrows, Frigid Forage, Fuse, Grizzly Coolers, Hoyt, Hoyman Tree Sauce, Muddy Outdoors, and Realtree. Day 8, October 17th. Before we talk about this evening's hunt, I'm going to bring you up to speed on what I did this morning. Uh, right at first light, I went back to where I'd shot that doe yesterday evening, and she was laying right where we'd seen her go down in the beans. And the hit was surprisingly uh, vital. I, I guess I would have thought that she was going to, she would have died quicker based on what I saw once I went and recovered the deer. So kind of a weird deal. Uh, got her out and uh, pulled that tree stand. I don't want to hunt that spot anymore. It was too risky with those deer being able to get behind us on that big field. I just didn't think they were going to use that big field as much as they did. So we've got to find a different way to hunt that little small inner field if we're going to continue to go in there. Uh, we can't have four or five deer getting behind us every night. So I got that pulled and I moved a, a uh, redneck trailer blind on the other side of that bedding point. And it was out on that big and beastie food plot that we had originally started pulling pictures of this old eight. I moved a, a redneck trailer blind out onto that big and beastie plot. So typically in my experience it takes about a week to 10 days at the most for the deer to get used to those blinds and then we should be able to start hunting up there uh, and not have to worry about the deer flaring away from the blind. So now for this evening's hunt we got a real nice wind out of the south here, probably 10 to 15 miles an hour, but it's a bit warm. It's in the low 70s, and we're going to go back to the spot that we started. It's a little small food plot that we carved out of the timber, and it's maybe a half an acre at the most, probably closer to a quarter of an acre, a little small clover plot. Sets up perfect for these south winds. There's a deer here that we had gotten trail camera pictures of and that Drake had seen when driving around the neighborhood, real brown antler nine pointer. I can't say for sure how old this deer is, so it'd be kind of fun to get a, a look at this deer and then make a decision. So hopefully he comes out. This is, it does seem to be where he's living. This time of the year, I just bounce around on the fringes, make sure that all my stands are ready and try to kill some does. So it's been uh, going along pretty well so far. Uh, be good to shoot a few more does and hit a few more tree stands before the rut and then we'll be all set. Got about probably 45 minutes left of legal shooting time. And coming into the tree uh, originally, there was a doe out in the plot. And for a second there, I thought I might be able to sneak in and get a shot. But as soon as I got behind that tree where I couldn't see her anymore, I couldn't tell when she had her head down and she saw my legs moving, I'm sure. And eventually she spooked out. But just a few minutes ago, the doe came in and offered me a pretty easy 20 yard, 22 yard shot uh, right down below the tree stand here, but uh, she didn't last very long. She went into the woods probably about 25 yards and laid down and within a minute she dropped her head and was dead, so that was good. We've got, like I said, a little bit of time left, so hopefully something else comes out. It'd be, it would be fun to see some antlers tonight, but I'm not opposed to trying to fill another doe tag while I'm here too. Whatever comes out, we'll show it to you. Uh, I'll be back in to grab that doe just as soon as the hunt is over with. And then uh, I don't think I'm going to hunt tomorrow. But I probably will get out again on Thursday is my, is my feeling right now. So check back again in a couple days and uh, we'll keep the action going. Uh, 
keep hunting as many spots as we can and trying to fill my doe quota before I get too far into the season here. <laughs>